Good afternoon and welcome to the October 25th meeting of the Watershed Committee. Uh, we have several members of the committee, uh, both here and on Zoom, as well as several members of staff uh, here in the audience. So first item of business is the approval of the minutes from September 7th. Any comments, questions, concerns on those minutes? No comments or concerns. I uh, make a motion to uh, approve the minutes. Moved by Ed. Anyone want to second those? Yep, I'll second that, Mark. And second by Mike Simon, thank you. All in favor, aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. So we'll jump right into our uh, committee discussions. Um, the agenda has been posted and is uh, also available uh, online. So the first item we want to get uh, into is the ATIP pond treatments. Uh, as the committee is aware, we've done this for several years now. Uh, Mike had reached out recently uh, back to ATIP. They seem to be the only game in town that, that does this currently, uh, but reached out to them uh, to get an updated uh, quote on that. Um, we did receive the quote. Um, I don't know if you can open that up. Um, and then similar to what we did last time, they're willing to hold their price for three years on that. So I uh, just wanted to share that with the group. Um, first, the, the, the pricing as well as, um, you know, get a determination as whether the committee wants to continue on with that. So this is for doing treatment. Um, again, we don't treat uh, algae. Um, we don't do aesthetics. This is for treating overgrowth of, as you can see, um, water lilies, um, cattail growth. Um, this past year, we did some additional treatment for uh, the tollwood ponds for cattails. Um, anything that's going to plug up the outfall structure and block uh, the drainage functionality of it. So I know we have other ponds that have algae in them. I know we have ponds that have blue-green algae. I'm not aware of any treatment for those. So just to share with this, the audience um, that you know we don't treat you know for those in aesthetics. It's uh, for functionality of the ponds. But um, you know, with that, um, as we've done in the past, we still have uh, Glenbrook Pond on um, treating the, the water lilies and, and submerged vegetation. Um, we do have to get permits for that. So we get the permits. We do notify the downstream residents of that with the postcards. Um, we've been doing the Harvest Glen Pond. Again, that's water lilies and some uh, plant growth there. Uh, the Newberry Park Pond um, with duck, duckweed, um, water meal, and other various plants. Uh, the Tollwood Pond, and this year we did add in Tollwood to do uh, some treatment for the cattails. The cattails seem to be growing. Always had some cattail growth, but it seems to be getting excessive near the outfall structure. Uh, so we've added that. And then we're doing the, the Silverwood Pond um, for water lilies with that. So all told, and that one does also require a downstream um, uh, notification for the neighbors downstream of that one as, as well. And I think Mike's pulling up the, the treatment we did for the cattails uh, this year. So that was the cattail uh, treatment was on the Harvest Glen. Um, and as well as the Tollwood Ponds uh, for both of those. So. I believe if we hadn't, we'd shared these with the committee um, prior, but just want to make sure the committee's, you know, one supportive of, you know, continuing to move ahead with, uh, you know, the treatment we'd be doing to these ponds. And if you had any questions, concerns with what we've been doing on those. I don't have any questions, but I think because what we've already sunk into it and the progress we've made with them, I'd hate to see a stop. I think it'd be wise to continue on with it. Okay. Yeah, we've been, you know, treating, let's say, sporadically these ones we've been doing, you know, continuously, but we've, you know, assess all the different ponds uh, through the help of the DPW. Uh, they go out typically every year, look at the ponds and see what needs to be done. Um, some of it's handwork and just general cleanup that needs to be done, and they, you know, prioritize those. And then these ones where we need a little extra help, uh, we've uh, utilized the ATIP group, and, you know, they've gone and done the treatment in the past. So. Hey, Mark, um, yep. I attended an uh, American Public Works Association event out in um, Orchard Park last month at this, uh, it was called uh, Green Lake, okay. which yep. is a town-owned recreational um, facility out in Orchard Park that had been um, under a lot of uh, eutrophication and basically 
they had a consultant come in and they used this guy, his name is uh, Dave Adrian, and he does this uh, pond and lake restoration stuff for, uh, that's his business. Okay. So I do have his card here. I was gonna bring it this evening, but I'm, I'm, I'm going remote. Um, he did say that he would be willing to come to one of our meetings um, and maybe look at what the town of Penfield has going on with the smaller ponds, because that's kind of his forte. Okay. He does not do treatment, but he does uh, recommendations and consultation on treating smaller ponds and lakes. Um, if you'd like, I will give you his card and um, perhaps we can have him come into a meeting in the future. Sure, yeah, um, send, send his he, contact he over. Would, he would, he said, I asked him, oh, you're gonna charge us for the initial meeting and he was a little, eh, kind of probably, so I don't know what his fees are but I will put you uh, in touch with him and perhaps in the future, uh, we can at least have him in for a consultation and maybe you can give him a, a tour of the ponds that uh, we're currently treating and he may have some, um, some information uh, that would be helpful. Um, and again, ATIP's been doing a great job. I agree with that, that we should continue to utilize their services, but maybe there are some other options that this gentleman could help us out with. So I will get you his contact information. Great, yeah, always open to you know additional options, treatment methods, uh, you know whatever can be done. So if you wanna send that over to me, I'll contact him. And then uh, if you were in Orchard Park, I don't know if he's out of Buffalo or where he's out of, but you know we could offer our next meeting after this isn't until February but we could offer to have him zoom in and at least have a conversation with the committee and save him the, the trip out, at least for the first first go around. And then if he's interested and wants to come out, we can you know bring him out and walk some ponds with him. And... Yep. So I would just, you know, as, as an action item, maybe ask Lisa to um, put him on the agenda. And that's a great, great point, Mark. We could just have him zoom in. That way we're not, you know, expensing him if you will to drive out to uh he's in blaze blaze blasdale blaisdale blaisdale, yeah, blaisdale like south, south above yep. so, okay yeah they could yeah. save him the trip but and be happy to have a conversation and zoom in with the the committee and have a conversation would be good okay great um i'll work with lisa to set that up i'll get you guys the contact info okay thank you yep um, so it sounds like committee supportive of continuing with the, the pond treatments. Mike um, sharing on the screen some of the, the pictures just to kind of show, you know, where we're at. Um, first one's Glenbrook Pond. So showing, I think you went out last week and took yeah. your Last pictures. Friday. Okay. So this is Glenbrook uh, looking at uh, the outlet. Um, I just tried to zoom out again for Glenbrook. That shows that the... Lily pad growth is pretty much gone, so that's nice. We do have some growth of cattails along the edge, but uh, it looks pretty good for our treatment. Uh, this is the Harvest Glen outlet, uh, which shows that pretty much all the lily pad growth uh, has died for the season, so it's pretty wide open. And but again, we do have uh, cattail growth along the edge. Here's that same pond, but on the south side of the pond, um, showing how you know the cattails are starting to die off. But I think it takes a couple treatments to completely get rid of them. This is the Silverwoods Pond down by the outlet, um, which again had a lot of lily pad growth and stuff like that. So that looks pretty clean and looks good. Again, Silverwoods. And then this is the Tollwood Pond. Uh, this is just kind of more of a general shot showing uh, the uh, inlet on the left and then the outlet is over on the right, but in between we do have some open water. Uh, so this is the inlet going into the pond showing that, you know, we did treat it for the cattails. It is kind of dying, but 
you know, further into the waters, you know, heaven is a little more lively, I guess. And then this is the outlet side, showing the, that the cattails are dying pretty good, so. And that's it for the pictures. Nice, thanks for getting those and updating that. Sure. Um, so we will go ahead with the recommendation for a tip. Um, we'll wait till after the first of the year uh, once the new budget's in place. Uh, but since our meeting isn't until February, typically we sit with the town board mid-January, February, and then at least they can get that process started. I think it's worked out um, better if we can get into the board. The board authorizes it, and then a tip can get the applications in sooner. Uh, the couple years we waited till April, May, June, and then we had high waters um, that we kind of ran into trouble where DEC was focused on the lake levels and issuing permits for pond treatments kind of was the secondary. So um, we'll work to get that in earlier in the season, and I think that's worked out the last couple of years that they can hit that June time frame, which seems to be the best for treatment of the lilies, and you got to wait for them to be up and then do the treatment of it. So we'll move ahead uh, with that. Um, next item, I just wanted to circle back our last meeting we talked about, we were going to have a walk with the DEC. Um, so we walked with them earlier this month. They wanted to look at three different uh, locations we have in permit for permits for next year. Uh, so the first one was at the Shadow Pines property. Um, so as we shared with the group, there's new generation of, of uh, people starting at the DEC. Um, they've got a little bit different take, looking at the permits a little bit differently. So I think uh, maybe some of the days of our getting permits to clean from A to Z, at least in the short term, uh, may not be there anymore. You know, they're looking at what spot needs to be treated, what spot needs to be cleaned. We'll give you a permit for that one spot, that one location. Um, but just giving a blanket permit for the entire stream doesn't seem to be where they're at right now. So we'll deal with what we got to deal with. Um, but as Mike's bringing up, um, this is the Shadow Pines property. So you've got Wayland Road uh, running along the middle, five mile line. We parked at our, our uh, let's say the maintenance shop parking lot, uh, walked up the road, kind of looked at the stream as we went, and then particularly focused on the back area where uh, there's discharge that comes out of the Dolomite um, mine area. And uh, coming out of that, there's a lot of sediment through there. So um, we walked that back area. They did see the impacts. Um, there were some streams down, or streams, some uh, trees down in that area. There was some sediment that had deposited. Um, we did talk to the homeowner. Um, on the corner, um, talked with them, said, yeah, it's not draining as well as it, it has in the past. Um, you know, they've noticed the issues and how it's holding water up. And I think some of that's holding water back and we've had some complaints, concerns from uh, kind of east of that, the Neville Creek area and some of those neighborhoods that back up and doesn't drain as well. So uh, thankfully, I think the DEC kind of saw the need in that area. And then as well as um, we've got some areas kind of downstream. I think most of Shadow Pines is, is in pretty good condition. Um, we do down in the lower end, um, off the end of Sawmill, there's been a, uh, some spots of some trees down or some clumps of stuff down in there, and hopefully we can access using the old uh, roadway that our genie kind of put in. They put an access way in there. We could track down and then, you know, pull some blockages out from down below. So hopefully DEC saw what they needed to on that one. Um, but it's kind of on either end is the, the sediment uh, deposition towards the north end, um, right where it comes out of that, um, just west of, of Five Mile and a little bit, it's backing up to the east of Five Mile and then on that, that lower end. So um, that was the first spot we stopped. Uh, second, we went over to Harris Road. So this was a spot uh, where it, uh, just uh, Harris and Kennedy Road on the lower end, it hasn't been uh, draining as well. Uh, we met with Dave Woodward over there and, um, you know, got his his input to take on, on that drainage. Um, the DEC kind of walked the back area. It is some wetlands. They are very hesitant about granting any permitting within a wetland area. Um, so we'll have to see you are allowing any equipment in a wetland area. Seems to be the new stance. So, if and when we have may have to do, um, you know, handwork to get there. Um, Mike's jumping ahead to Watson Halbert. We'll get yeah. there in a minute. Yeah. 
Is DEC going to help you with the hand? This no, they have a difference of opinion on what can be done by hand and what can't be done by hand. Um, there was. There you go. Well, they, we were talking, and, and Eric walked with us. There was three and four foot diameter trees. We said, "Okay, how do you? Yes, you can drop a three to four foot diameter tree, but how do you get it out? But how do you get it out?" And their option was cut it up into small chunks and then roll it out of there. So you can cut a one foot wide little <laughs> slice. It could of take forever. A hundred foot tall tree and then slowly roll it out with of there. What labor? Yeah, we asked for their help and how does that comply with OSHA regulations? And if somebody gets hurt. Yeah. Doing stuff, well, you're already standing in a ditch and you're in the muck and the mud and you're trying to cut up slices of tree and roll it out of the way so it's not blocking the ditch. And they were really seriously. Uh, they looked at me when I said, wow. that kind of runs against OSHA regulations. And I said, well, we don't see allowing equipment in a wetland and that's really against where we're going with this stuff. And so the outside of that and the upland areas, I think you know, we can get permits for that or if we can reach it from the side. And on the Watson Hulbert one, I think there were spots, there's a farm field that kind of runs parallel to it. There's spots you could reach in and if you've got the, you know, the thumb and you could pluck stuff out, but they were pretty much no fly in wetlands for bringing equipment in. So we'll have to see how do we move forward and how do we, you know, get there. But um, yeah, so this was the lower end. This is some of the wetland that goes through the back. I don't know where how we clean some of that stuff if we can find upland area to get to it um but the wetland at least for the time being is kind of a, a hands-off if you can do it by hand great if you can't then it is what it yeah, is so. Let it back up. so um w was happy they came out and walked it was happy we More could wetlands. yeah yeah, was happy we at least had the conversation. I think at least they saw some of the need that we had, but um, you know, their stance and how do we resolve it or clean it or maintain it was a little bit different than what we've been used to in the past or how we see as safe working for our DPW employees. So. Um, and then the third spot we went to um, was Watson Hulbert um, so this one we pulled in just, uh, this kind of fed from, um, Penfield Center starts coming down and then feeds in over towards, um, or Sweets Corners, excuse me. Thanks, Bob. I got the face. <laughs> so from Sweets Corners feeding down, um, over, um, down to Watson Hulbert Road, we parked just north of the, the Water Authority's property and then kind of walked in from uh, Watson Holbert. Um, yep. So in on the, the, the backside, we walked in there. We've got some sediment under the, the culvert at the road. Um, Mike's highlighting that. So we've got sediment in that area. And then we walked up uh, westward across the back. And then as we kind of walked along that field, there was areas we could access from the field possibly get in you know equipment and, and if there was a blockage reaching from there but a lot of that area that's wooded as wetland so where and how we get in from there uh, you know kind of remains to be seen so we'll have to see how that middle area works but at least if we can open up the culverts at the road um, they're supportive of you know maintaining infrastructure so roads culverts that stuff but open land areas wooded areas wetlands I think is where we're going to run into some issues with them in the future. So stand by and see where we go. But I said, is our, our operating we've done in the past how many years and have done and gone through this process, I think is going to change a bit, but we'll navigate it the best we can and go from there. Uh, anything else I forgot, missed? Adding, you guys came on the other side of the creek and came back through, so. Yep. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, I didn't get lost this time, so that was good. Very true. Um, so then stream cleaning updates. Um, Bob and the, the drainage crew uh, wrapped up uh, over at County Line Road, so that uh, part is done. They then jumped down to Wilbur Tract Road um, we did get a nice note 
uh, today from the Schneffs. Uh, so for that, uh, Bob, please share that with uh, your team. Uh, but they wrote a nice handwritten thank you note saying great job, uh, good job by the crew. Um, it solved some longstanding issues they've had. Um, we've had, as we shared before, when the uh, Caroline Court development went in, that added a pond and, and added a different discharge down into there um, that wasn't being, uh, wasn't well defined. So they kind of had a delta going through their, their woods and their, their property where each rainstorm had kind of picked a different path. Um, a little bit wet down there, as, as we saw. Mike and I were walking in there and started, decided to get about halfway in and stop and turn around before we sank too far in. Um, but uh, it looked great. Jimmy and uh, Dave did a nice job with that and obviously made the, the residents very happy. So uh, please share that the note with, with your crews and, and Jimmy, and they were very pleased with that. So thank Good. you. Uh, next, or actually right now, they're working on the Chippenham piece. So we'd done the lower section from behind the residential subdivision um, from Chippenham up uh, kind of the back and then had stopped as it got to the open field area. Um, Bob and his crews have been working on that and getting that, that section um, opened and, and draining better. Um, and then he just shared that they were looking to jump over to uh, Meadowbrook and Ashbrook Circle. Um, so we will get the releases for that one and then get them started over there. We've got that permit through the end of the year, so we'll get that one done. And then we've got the permit for Black Forest and the releases for that one, so then that can be a winter project for us to roll into that one over the winter time, and that'll probably take us a couple of months to get through that one. So thankfully we've got a few backed up and a few you know, in, in queue, to, as we always do, to try to kind of keep ahead of it. But as we're looking to 2022, those are the ones we're kind of running into the concern with DEC about some of the future ones. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Anybody have anything else? I'm just checking to see if, I don't see any public participation online, no callers. No emails. Uh, so for communications, um, I shared uh, what we've got going on with the town. County Stormwater Coalition uh, continues on. Um, they've got some staffing changes over there, but uh, we'll continue to uh, move ahead with the County uh, Stormwater Coalition as that uh, group helps with the H2O Hero, a lot of the communications. Um, and then if and when we do get audited, you know, that group has been there to support uh, towns and staff as part of that. And then into the, the state and EPA, this is the one uh, item I shared last time. Um, so far this year, they, the DEC has stated they want to do four audits. Uh, so far this year, um, they've done two and they've just announced that the village of Brockport is the next one. So November, the village of Brockport is going to be audited uh, by the DEC. So I'm noticing a little bit of a trend. So far, we've had the village of Webster, village of East Rochester, and the village of Brockport. So. Hopefully they'll continue down that trend and we stick with the village for, <laughs> for December. It could always be us. We're trying to be prepared and make sure we're, we're prepped and ready to go. But uh, thus far, they had not done any villages up until this point, but this year it seems to be the villages that are being uh, targeted. So hopefully that, uh, that trend continues. I see a guy on support for that. So um, if it stays a village, then we'll uh, keep doing what we need to do. But Maybe next year. Um, anybody else have any, uh, I don't see any old business, any, any new business, anything to share with the group? Nothing on our end. Um, as always, um, at this time of year, this is our last meeting. This is our, actually our November meeting, um, even though it's October 25th. Um, this is our last meeting of the year. It's November, just due to Election Day, Veterans Day. Those items kind of bumped our meeting around, so we moved in in October. Um, so with that, um, you know, would ask if the committee, and I'll reach out, or Linda will reach out to the rest of the, the committee members and see if you all are willing to continue to serve on in the next year um, as we prepare resolutions, and, you know, we'd leave that up to the board, but just see if, if this group is willing to continue to serve. I'm willing to. Absolutely. Mike and Mike. 
Simon's good. Yeah. Guyan. Guyan's good. Hey, okay. Art, so. I just wanted to um, I want to thank you and Mike O'Connor and the highway crew for a great job. And of course, Linda does a fantastic job with the uh, with the meeting minutes and the agenda and all that. So thank you guys so much for all your uh, support um, at the town level. And, you know, hopefully we can contribute moving on. And again, I appreciate all you guys do. Oh, thanks. So I, I think it's been a, been a good group and a good uh, uh, group to work with. Hopefully this year we can get back to doing our site tour in June and go look at a few locations and um, you know, when we come back in, in February, see where we are with, hopefully we're starting to think about uh, winter melt off and getting into some spring drainage and everything else. But I think uh, thus far, and thanks to, to, to Tony and the town board, um, been supporting doing the drainage and keeping the, the streams open and cleaned. Um, I think it has helped, um, you know, with the, the storms that we have had, you know, we've had say minimal, we've got nuisance complaints, but I don't think we've had major washouts i think it's it's definitely been a, a better mint and it's definitely been an improvement to you know to keep these open and flowing and you know while we're not looking to drain wetlands we're not looking to you know dig the panama canal but at least keeping in and especially with it uh, all the ash trees dying off and falling over and everything else it, you just end up with debris in the streams and it's just needed to kind of go through every couple of 15 to 20 years even and so it's not a regular turnaround but i think we've got a regular program going on now and I think it's uh, worked out pretty well so, um, so with that I say we'll reach out uh, to Harold and see if he's uh, willing to serve we'll pass that on to the town board and then obviously let the town board uh, you know go ahead with those resolutions and make that happen so if nobody has anything else to share uh, we will hereby conclude the October 25th meeting at 4.31 p.m. Thanks, everybody. Have a good holiday season. Stay well, stay safe, and we'll see you in 2022.